Hello, I am Parni Chaggi and in this lecture we are going to be taking up a popular poem by Toru Dutt, Our Casuarina Tree. Toru Dutt was an Indian poet who wrote both in French as well as English. Born in Calcutta in a wealthy and respectable Bengali family, her father Govin Chandar Dutt was a linguist and a writer and her mother, Kshetramoni, was interested in Hindu religion and mythology. Torudat was the youngest after her sister, Aru, and brother, Abju, and they shared deep love with each other. The family soon converted to Christianity, and Toru, as a result, received her education in France and England and was greatly inspired by the English Romantic poets. She returned to India in early 1870s and learned Sanskrit. She is known for her writings, but she died prematurely. And her poetry comprises a sheaf gleaned in French fields that was published in 1876, uh, which consisted of her translations of French poetry into English. She also left her two unfinished novels, Bianca or The Young Spanish Maiden in English and another in French. This poem, Our Casuarina Tree, is a remarkable, nostalgic poem about her memory of childhood. In this poem, memory and nostalgia are entwined in the whole writing which reflect a lore of loss and longing. She feels the pain of the loss of her sister and brother who were very dear to her and the tree as a result becomes a symbol of homeland, affection, childhood memories, her joyous childhood and of course it's it further transcends time and eternity to become a useful universal entity. So as we look into the poem, we see that it is rich with symbols, imagery, metaphors and it brings along a queer pain of her heart in a very lively and a pictorial manner. Now this poem was uh, published in her anthology Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan in 1882. So let's look at the poem. Like a huge python winding round and round the rugged trunk indented deep with scars up to its very summit near the stars a creeper climbs in whose embraces bound no other tree could live. Now here she is imagining the rugged trunk of the tree and comparing it to a huge python, a snake which is winding round and round. Now the creeper has indented deep with scars up to the top of the tree. So it is completely encircling the tree and gripping it into its hold. Now here you may also sense a similarity between the tree in the clutches of this creeper attempting to sap its strength and the three young Dutt children in the grip of a killer disease tuberculosis because of which these three children died including Torudet herself. So Torudat says, the flowers of the tree are hung in crimson clusters. Further she says, but gallantly the giant wears the scarf and flowers are hung in crimson clusters all the boughs among, whereon all day are gathered bird and bee, and oft at nights the garden overflows with one sweet song that seems to have no close sun darkling from our tree while men repose. So while men rest and relax, 
there is a song being sung from the tree that soothes the listeners sitting under the tree and has a tranquilizing effect on the men. So here she says that the flowers of the tree are hung in crimson clusters in bunches and that this casuarina tree is like a haven for the birds, for the, for the fauna, for the insects and is almost alive with the buzz of bees and the chirping of birds. So it, it gives a heavenly sight and sound to the visitors and travellers nearby. Next she says, when first my casement is wide open thrown at dawn, my eyes delighted on it rest. Casement is the window through which she can look out to the casuarina tree. So she says, whenever my window is wide open and my eyes delighted, I feel the happiness to look at this casuarina tree which gives me so much solace. Sometimes and most in winter, on its crest, a grey baboon sits statue-like alone. Now, a grey baboon is a monkey whom she watches from inside her house through the window. Now, this stanza is specifically replete with beautiful pictorial imagery. She says this, this view of the tree with monkeys playing in it gives me delight. Sit statue-like alone, this baboon, grey baboon, the old monkey is sitting statue-like all alone on the tree, watching the sunrise, while on lower boughs his puny offspring leap about and play. So now his little children are also playing all around and he is watching and monitoring his family sitting on the branch of the tree. And far and near, coquillas hail the day, and to their pastures wend our sleepy cows. And in the shadow, on the broad trunk, tank cast by that hoar tree, so beautiful and vast, the water lilies spring like snow and mast. So now we have a number of images, we have similes, we have pictorial effects that adorn this stanza. And she says that there is a play going on in the children, in the infants of the monkey baboon and on the lower branches the offspring of the baboon are leaping around. Gradually as the sun is rising she can also see the coquillas greeting the day with their song and the poetess is mesmerized by these animals and their sights and sounds. We'll continue with the discussion of this poem in the next lecture. Thank you for now.